2.5 complex numbers and roots. We're going to start talking about imaginary and complex numbers and then solving quadratics with complex roots. You can see in the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 1 that it does not cross the x-intercept, which means there's no zeros. If I were to take and solve 0 equals x squared plus 1, I know the 1 popped over to the line. I'll just put this right here. If I had to solve this, you put, move the 1 over, so it's negative 1 equals x squared. To get rid of the square, take the square root. Whenever you take the square root of a negative number, we're not getting any real solutions. And in previous sections, we would just say there's no solution. But really, there's no real solutions. What we're going to start calling them are imaginary units. Whenever you take the square root of a negative number, you get an imaginary number. What we have here, I'm looking in the numbers part. Whenever you take the square root of a negative number, you call it i. So square root of negative 1 is equal to 1, equal to one i. If I take the square root of negative 2, whenever you see the square root of a negative, it really means square root of negative 1 times square root of the number. Whenever you take the square root of a negative 1, you get i. So the square root of negative 2 is i square root of 2. The negative made it imaginary. If I have the square root of negative 4, I actually know the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Because it was negative, it's 2i. The square root of negative 4 is 2i. What happens when I square a square root? Square cancels out the square root, right? So you're actually, you just get negative 1. But what does negative, square root of negative 1 mean? i. So i squared really means negative 1. So if I'm taking two imaginary numbers and I multiply them, two imaginaries being multiplied becomes a real negative 1. Okay, I have 5 square root of negative 121. So the first thing you notice is that you have the square root of a negative number. So I know right now I have 5 times i. What's the square root of 121? 11. So I'm really taking 5 times i times 11. What's 5 times 11? 55, and then we throw the i in the end. 5 square root of negative 121 is 55i. This one, I have negative square root of negative 96. The two negatives are not in a row. That's a negative square root negative. All right? So don't, don't think that these cancel out. I have negative. What does this tell you? i square root of 96. Do you know the square root of 96? No. So this is simplified right now. It's expressed as in terms of i. We can take and simplify this. Think of our perfect numbers. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. Do any of those numbers go into 96? 16. 16 does. Negative i square root of 16 times, 16 times what is 96? 6. What's the square root of 16? This really means 4. So it's going to be negative 4i square root of 6. This is the simplified version. When I have the square root of negative 12, what's the first thing you can write? i square root of 12. 
What does the square root of 12 break into? I square root of 4, square root of 3. What's the square root of 4? Your answer is 2i square root of 3. Good. I have x squared equals negative 144. You need to get rid of that square. How do you get rid of a square? Square root, square root. x equals, what's the first thing you can tell me? All right, square root of 144 is 12. That's part of it. Why is it i? Because it's negative. There's one thing we're missing, the plus or minus. Whenever you take the square root with a variable, it is always plus or minus. And that's what caught a lot of you up. A lot of you had the 12i. You didn't have the plus or minus. Try this one. What's your first step? First thing you need to do is move that 90 over. So we have x squared, or 5x squared, equals negative 90. What's your next step? Divide by 5. Divide by 5, divide by 5. x squared equals negative 18. Square root, square root, x equals i square root of 18, because you don't know the square root of 18. Now to go one step further, can I break 18 up? Square root of 9 times the square root of 2. What's square root of 9? So I have 3i square root of 2. On this one, I was just, this one, we forgot to put the plus minus. We put, we forgot the plus minus on here. The reason why in the last problem I put the i after the 12, and this one's in some between things, because I have 3 and then a square root of something. Put the i before the square root. Now the next thing we're going to start talking about are complex numbers. Complex numbers are really just a combination of real numbers and imaginary numbers. They're like x's and y's. They don't go together. You keep the reals with the reals, the imaginaries with the imaginaries. So to write a complex number, it is always the real part, then the imaginary part, a plus bi. 